How often do you find a video that talks about the edge of a photograph and not the stuff within it? The content, the meat, the juicy substance of an image. Welcome to episode 16 on visual language and photography. My name is Gabriel Leung, artist, photographer, and educator. I am pumped to be here and thank you for tuning in. This is a channel all about sharing insights to help and empower photographers to learn and advance. I hear a lot of times that people say they have learned the basic camera operations, they have good knowledge to produce a good photograph, to expose well, played with shutter speed and aperture a bit, but they don't know what's next. This channel is your next step to advance in your photography endeavor. Whether it's a hobby, whether you want to get serious about photography and doing it professionally, this could be the place to bridge that gap. So for today's question really is, what are the factors that makes the photograph depend on its edge? So let's just clear the confusion about the definition of the edge in this video that we are only referring to four-sided squares or rectangles produced by a camera and not talking about anything in design where you design a poster or website that you mask out a circular shape of an image or any organic shapes as well. Every photograph relies on all four edges to define the space for communication. What is inside is information, and what is outside is either mystery or what I might call imagination. Essentially, the edge is like a laser sharp point, drawing the line between showing and not showing, what can be seen and what can't, what is infinitely mysterious, and what is hard fact captured and presented to your audience. So let's go through my top three tips on mastering the edge of a photograph. Tip number one, center. And the most plain and simple way of talking about the edge of a photograph is to look at its opposites, the center. The center sits at the middle of an image. With equal spacing, it forms a perfectly equal relationship between the subject and the edge. When the subject is placed dead center and the middle, it is clearly visible with all attention placed on it. It is very stable, and also it sits comfortably inside the composition. But I would argue, however, that this also risks the composition of being too boring. Tip number two, drama. People who take risks are referred to as living on the edge. The edge of a knife is the sharpest and the most dangerous part. The edge of a ceramic plate is the most vulnerable. And the edge of a drinking glass with a bit of water you can turn that into an instrument that creates harmonious sound, which I don't know how to do. So what does that tell us? The edge is where things happen. The most exciting, the most dangerous, the most uncertain, probably the most uncomfortable or risky way of treating and composing an image. But you will surely grab your audience attention, for there's chemical reaction taking place. And so let's elaborate on that in the next tip. Tip number three, figure and ground. Figure and ground is the traditional way in painting and drawing referring to the subject and the background, or the subject and the space around the subject. Another way is to refer it as positive and negative. You might have seen this game-like drawing before where you simultaneously see a young and old lady really depending on where your eyes focuses on. And your eyes are having trouble defining which is which because this is playing a trick on the eye to divide the positive and the negative spaces into almost 50-50%. From a photographic perspective, the main subject, meaning the figure, it varies. It can always be bigger or smaller. It can be placed over here or there, closer to the center or closer to the edge. 
Depending on the size and placement of the figure, the ground is like a byproduct created simultaneously, causing the weight and the balance of an image to shift. Now this chemical reaction between the figure and the ground can really topple the audience's reading of an image, especially when the main subject is being very close to the edge or even partially cut off. It generates a kind of tension suggesting visual movement or even suggesting something happening beyond the frame. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this video, it would really mean a lot to me that you can just help the algorithm to push this video out by a simple like and comment. Things like saying hi and thank you, that would really do a lot. And if you're truly finding value, consider subscribing and staying connected. So here's a plus one tip. And just to reiterate what exactly is a plus one tip, it's a bonus tip, but to apply to something more universal and to help you just think outside the box. So for today's plus one tip is continuity. For a subject that's partially cut off, it conveys a sense of mystery and also a continuation beyond the picture frame. This is the part where you actually decide not to show your audience. For something that's unimportant, people will just neglect it. But for something that's so important, the main subject that's being cut off, people would crave for more. When they don't see any, they can only imagine. Continuation can easily be applied to a lot of different creative applications. Imagine for a website portfolio or a printed poster layout, and even for a book cover, where the subject is actually cut off towards the side where you would actually open the book. Everything is being considered of how the audience would engage with the work. So apart from talking about the thinking behind how to utilize the concept of the edge of a photograph, I want to leave you guys with something a bit more practical. And this is the whole purpose of having a take home tip. And today, this is called in-camera crop. It's something that's being more and more forgotten in the digital age. So back in the days when I learned photography, it was all happening in the dark room. I had to use a film holder, two pieces of metal hinged together to sandwich a film, whether it's 35 millimeter, 120, four by five, and to expose it in an enlarger to expose onto the print. So something that a lot of people like to do is to file out the edges of the opening of that film holder so that light can actually leak through the edges of an image that creates a dark black border around it. This is like a cool effect, a kind of aesthetic that you purposely create. But also having a deep dark black border that has the texture of the film also means that you can no longer do any kind of post editing crop. So when you actually expose your image, when you capture it out on the street, you have to really be able to compose an image really well, the way you want it, the way you really want to speak to your audience. Uh, when you are thinking about, oh, I want to have this kind of film texture edge around my image, you can no longer crop in post. And this is really good training for everyone who is either starting off or even if you do photography professionally, really exercise how to do in-camera crop the way you want it. Just to do a quick recap on the three tips concerning the edge of a photograph are center, drama, figure, and ground. So after knowing all of that about the concept of using the edge of a photograph, what exactly can you do with it? Honestly, this could be the most vital concept in photography, art, or design. And as a photographer, I would really suggest just doing one thing following the take home tip is to practice your in-camera crop. So go and photograph a situation that involves constant change or movement, like out on the street, at a market, at a sporting event, and just try to crop in camera exactly how you anticipated it, how you wanted that image to look like, and really feel the difference of how your psychological state changes the way you physically press the shutter and how you can actually improve after that. Don't forget to hashtag me, Gabriel Lung, JPEG, or directly tag me at gabrielung.jpg so that I will see your work. 
If you often process your images on your computer, I've created this free Lightroom presets pack that will really help you to save time and achieve that professional look with the contrast and all kinds of subject can be applied because this is exactly what we use day in and day out in the studio. I'll leave a link down below. It's totally free. You just have to sign up for a newsletter, stay connected. So what have you learned in this episode? Does it change the way you concern about the kind of subject you like to photograph, especially at the edges of it? Let me know down in the comments. Another concept that really extends the conversation about the edge, especially the drama of an image, is dynamic composition. Go check out this video where I talk about the topic and I will see you over there.